time. Well, the hush falls over the crowd. That must mean it's 6 o'clock and time to start. So, uh, yes, it is. So we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, first order of business is uh, the agenda. I would, if council would approve, uh, like to move the delegation of the uh, medieval day up to uh, the first order of business and also add an in-camera item at the end. So if someone would adopt the agenda with that. Yeah. Councillor Reid, all those in favor of that or any discussion? No, we're all already all in favor, perfect, thank you. That being said, before we move into our public hearings, we'll have a presentation. Ms. Guida. Excellent. Uh, good evening, Mayor Janung and members of Council. Your first delegation this evening is the Concord Public Library, and they're before Council to ask you to request that you proclaim July 27th, 2019 to be Medieval Day in Cochrane. This is their fourth annual Mid Medieval Day, and it's taking place July 27th from 10 to 4, and they're here to make a presentation. Andrea Johnson will uh, tell Council about the event. Thank you. Now, it better not be any kind of special ceremony or anything yeah. fancy. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> Yeah, this is just fine. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Nani Nani, good gentle folk. It's that time of year that you've all been waiting for our medieval day proclamation and parade. And I'm so happy to be here because as you all know, a jester unemployed is nobody's fool. <laughs> but I have more, I have more. Uh, why are the knights always so tired? because they work the night shift. <laughs> I have one more. What do Vikings play when they're on a long journey? Cards, because they always have a deck. Oh, oh it's good to be alive. <laughs> So my name is Andrea Johnston, and I am by day a mild-mannered uh, yet epic librarian, but by night I'm the adorable jester that you see before you, riding atop my loyal steed, Gerald. With me tonight are two ferocious knights from the Wardens of the Red Tower, a couple fearsome Vikings from the Vesterheim Vikings, the lovely Lady Gail Ames, Brooke White, our extremely talented young squire from Bow Valley High School, and our CEO and fearless leader who moonlights as that woman, Jerry Maitland. Tonight, I would like to tell you a tale, and no, it is not the cautionary tale about using too much self-tanner and running out when you're halfway done. It's not that. It is the tale of the fourth annual Medieval Day happening on July 27th at the Cochrane Public Library. Once more, knights and Vikings will descend upon our fair building Historical villages will be set up. Castles will be inflated. Shenanigans will be had. There will be medieval dance lessons and heretofore unexplored heights of hilarity and tests of skill, including an archery range, axe throwing, and for those of you who are stout of heart, a pony hop station. There you will have to mount a steed similar to this number, uh, but a little more sturdy, and bounce your way to victory. But that's not all, gentle town council folk. Lo, we will have a dramatic presentation of King Arthur, Crisis at Camelot, uh, performed by our very own drama club at the library. Magic shows, most spectacular photo studios with our very own Cochrane Camera Club. Uh, merchants galore, storytelling, Dumbledore's cousin. Music, food, and more. Truly, it is going to be a, a most wondrous day. And so we would like to invite the entire town council to join us on this day of days, this historical moment when we proclaim proudly, today we're gonna party like it's 476 AD. 
So please dress up, cometh down, bringeth thy family, and partake in the incredible excitement that we have planned. Verily, we would like to extend a special invitation to the mayor and his wife to be our royalty for the day. We now present the crown and scepter to beast worn on July 27th. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a new one. I'm not putting it on yet. It's not the day. It's not the day. Really? And we also humbly request that the mayor and council proclaim July 27th, 2019 to be Cochrane Medieval Day. Thy worship, please breaketh the seal on the proclamation for thy consideration, which readeth. Oh, I have to read them. Whereas Cochrane Medieval Day is a community event to promote knowledge, literacy, history, and an uproariously good time, and whereas we at the Cochrane Public Library are committed to encouraging our entire community in living history by learning and experiencing what the medieval era was like. May it therefore be resolved that the Town Council of Cochrane, Alberta recognizes and endorses this medieval day as an opportunity for the citizens of Cochrane to don costumes and participate in fun and shenanigans in celebration of our fourth annual medieval day. I thank thee sincerely for thine intention and, a t and time, dearest mayor and council folk. Parting is such sweet sorrow, but we do desire thee will be asked, be, at the, be able to join us at our fourth annual celebration of the Cochrane Public Library Medieval Day. Thank you, thee. I don't think you can leave yet. We haven't dismissed the guard. <laughs> well, thank you for your presentation. Um, and those of you who have not been to a council meeting, they all start like this. <laughs> At least they did 400 whenever that date was that you said. So um, happy to acknowledge, I think we'll, somebody should put a motion on the floor to have uh, the day proclaimed. But uh, having had the opportunity to uh, wear said crown last year, um, very pleased to be invited again. Thank you for the initiative and uh, all the work that you guys do on this uh, really cool day in Cochrane. So again, um, if no one realizes from your presentation, you do take this day quite seriously. And uh, I really admire the, uh, the efforts that you go to. So thank you. Councillor Flowers. Yes, I make the motion that we proclaim July 27th, Medieval Day in Cochrane. I am on this board and they work really hard, but obviously they have lots of fun as well. Thank you. Any other discussion? Pokes at the jester, if you will? No? I said jester. I have a scepter now. Okay, all those in favor of proclaiming uh, July 27th, Medieval Day, please raise thy hand. Thank you. Do you have a quill? For me to sign, or should I just use a? I'll just do. I left the quill on my other horse. <laughs> it's my best uh, shorthand. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you. Yes. Now you can. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, guys. All right. I was assuming everybody in their gallery was going to leave as well after the fun, but uh, it's nice to see so many people here for uh, the actual meeting part of the meeting tonight. So uh, that being said, we will uh, recess our regular meeting and move into the public hearing. And do we need two minutes this night? No, we're good to go? Okay. The first public hearing tonight is on bylaw 20, 2019 land use bylaw amendment, redesignation East End. Ms. Crosby.
All right, good evening, Mayor and members of Council. Tonight I will be presenting Administration's public hearing report for Bylaw 20 2019. Administration has received a proposed land use bylaw amendment to rezone a parcel in the East End community located at Lot 4, Block H, Plan 4810L, civically known as 316 First Street East, from Residential Medium Density Multi Unit Dwelling District, R2X, to Central Business District, CB District. The applicant currently owns two adjacent parcels to the west of the subject property, 308 and 312 First Street East, outlined in black, which are designated CB District. Council approved this redesignation in 2017 by Bylaw 31 2017. The applicant would like to redevelop a one stop professional health establishment, which would include a walk in medical clinic, pharmacy, travel clinic, dental and orthodontic clinic, chiro, physio, and optometry, etc with residential units above the commercial areas. <clears throat> in order for the applicant to move forward with their project at 316 First Street, it requires a redesignation to the CB District, where these uses are listed uses in the district. There have been no preliminary drawings that have been submitted, and a detailed review of the development would be made at the development permit stage. The purpose and intent of the R2 District is to provide a comprehensively designed development with a mix of dwelling units in various housing forms. The purpose and intent of the CB District is to provide for pedestrian oriented commercial developments serving the town and surrounding areas. The uses will be those that promote the downtown as Cochrane's primary area of community, social interaction and a focus of civic and cultural identity. Administration has circulated the application to internal departments and external agencies and adjacent residents for comment and has reviewed the application through the town's statutory planning documents. The Cochrane Sustainable Plan, Sustainable Community Building, together we create a complete community through a balance of environmental, economic and social infrastructures. The application seeks to add economic development opportunity to an existing development parcel in the East End neighborhood. Cochrane Sustainability Plan, Pathway 6, Our Economy is Diverse. The applica applicant is seeking to increase businesses in the medical sector and provide local access to specialty medical services. Pathway 10, there's enough room for everything in, a, in our community should have. The application would add non-residential uses to an existing residential area while maintaining a residential component. Pathway 11, where you are in Cochrane, you are close and connected. The applicant is seeking the opportunity to provide commercial space on the main floor and multi-unit residential on an undeveloped parcel which will increase the residential density of this parcel. The Land Use Bylaw Amendment supports the Municipal Development Plan adopted by Council in 2008 where Section 1.3 Planning Principles and Goals, Principle 4, Economic Vitality, provides the foundation of a healthy, diverse, active, prosperous and resilient economy. Cochrane will be the community that offers a range of employment and economic opportunities and has an appropriate balance between residential and non-residential land uses. And as identified in 7.2, the economic development goals are to attract businesses that will diversify Cochrane's economy and create career opportunities, support the economic vitality of the downtown and encourage all businesses to stay and expand in the community. And also 8.2 land use goals to use the existing land use base efficiently and provide opportunities for creative use of land. Mixed uses of residential dwellings with non-residential uses are also supported throughout the community. The proposed amendment is not supported through the Lower East Neighbourhood Plan as it does not identify this portion of First Street as commercial development. However, Section 6.2 encourages street oriented commercial developments with residential above and Residential Policy 637 encourages redevelopment of underutilized parcels which as R2 designated lot uh, with a single <coughs> detached dwelling on it, this application responds. The map before you is a land use concept map in the Lower East uh, neighborhood plan, figure 10, identifying the land use as medium density residential. The proposed uses for medical clinics and dwelling units limited to the second floor and above are a permitted use in the CB district. The properties directly south and west of the subject lands on First Street East are also designated CB district and redesignating the subject parcel to CB district would blend in with the existing land uses previously approved. This is a site photo of 316 First Street East. There were no concerns from internal departments and external agencies regarding the LUB amendment. 
Um, CPC was given the opportunity to provide comments for Council's consideration at their meeting on June 19th. CPC was in support to the redesignation due to there being some existing businesses already there. The redesignation lends itself to the vision of mixed use neighborhoods, all depending on how it looks to blend in with a neighborhood along with trees and shrubs. As always, concern with parking to ensure the street does not get impacted by this new business and that there would be adequate on-site parking for commercial and residential, according to the calculation based at the time of a development permit application. CPC recommends that the development does not exceed three stories to align with the adjacent two properties and to ensure that the future build is in alignment with any Western Heritage uh, design guidelines. Administration also received an email from an adjacent resident who had concerns and asked that one, the land use redesignation be linked to the proposed development and two, that the developers of the medical facility hold an open house for interested citizens prior to the public hearing. The developers and the project manager met with the interested residents and the president of the community association on June the 10th. Residents heard from the applicant the vision for the development. Some residents expressed concern that once a redesignation is approved, the applicant could then change the vision. Planning attended this meeting and outlined the process for the land use redesignation and that it was the first step before the applicant could submit a development permit application. It should be noted that if the redesignation is approved to the CB district, the applicant landowner would be able to apply for any permitted or discretionary uses in that district. Administration has confirmed that the public hearing has been advertised in the June 13th and June 20th paper, and there were no other submissions to be noted at this time. Our recommended action is that Council receives and considers all comments presented during the public hearing for 2020-19. And that concludes my presentation. I would be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you for that. Council, any questions of administration? Councillor Flowers? Um, can I just ask, is, can they change the um, use once it's been redesignated? The vision, can it change totally? So once the land use bylaw, if it's approved to the CB district, they would be allowed any of the permitted or discretionary uses listed in that district. Even if it's not uh, on the area? The vision is not linked to the land use bylaw amendment. Thank you. So just to clarify, if I may, Councillor Flowers, you're asking if um, it's proposed use now is for a medical clinic, you're worried that that may change in the future? or not worried, you're asking if that could change. Yeah. And the answer is, is yes. yes, it could be anything on the CB district, right? Correct. Okay. Councillor Wilson? Just to clarify that point, if it were to be changed, it could be changed uh, to a permitted use, but a discretionary use would be brought back to CPC or council, just for my clarification. Uh, if it was a discretionary use, it would go to the Cochrane Planning Commission for approval. Thank you. Okay. Everybody's good? Okay. Thank you for your presentation. Does the applicant have a presentation? Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm just representing the uh, applicants. Uh, they were supposed to be here, but because of the family emergency, they could not make it. Um, but uh, these are the four uh, doctors, physicians, um, two couples, husband and wife. Their intent is to open a professional building, healthcare facility, and uh, their intent is to use a medical clinic and um, uh, associated health-related uh, chiropractic, physio physiotherapy, and uh, um, maybe there is a, a retail component, just a coffee shop or something like that. But basically, it's a professional health building development. Okay. Council, any questions for the applicant? No? Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. We will move to the gallery, or speakers list. I have Mr. Igor Visser speaking first, representing the Cochrane Settlement Community Association. Good evening. Hello. 
<clears throat> Let me just uh, pull up my little slideshow here. Hmm. Could I get a hand, please? I don't <laughs> see my. Uh, I, think, <laughs> I think it's being done remotely for you. Oh, I see. Yeah, which one's yours? I had sent it to Jamie Knight. It's. Uh, ah, there it is. Okay. Yes, thank you. All right. Cooking with gas. <clears throat> Hello, Mayor and Council. My name is Igor Visser, and I'm here representing the Cochrane Settlement Community Association also known as East Cochrane. I would like to introduce Andy Monshaw, my co-presenter, and a member of the Community Association. Andy will be available for question and has a few comments after my presentation. r 2 x zoning is intended to be a buffer between the central business area of Cochrane and single-family residential. <clears throat> and r 2 x has served this purpose. However, the residents of East Cochrane have a few concerns about the latest rezoning application. Uh, slide. There we go. <clears throat> zoning. The, integration, the integrated downtown action plan indicates that it foresees First Street East as an extension of downtown. I would like the town to consider expanding R2X further east in consideration of the growth pressures from the downtown. This would give homeowners in the east end more options and allow for greater densities in line with the downtown integration plan. Rezoning. By rezoning the lots 308 and 312, and by considering this application to rezone 316, the town is essentially creating a central business, <clears throat> an island of central business. This seems to represent a random and incoherent approach to the planning in the East End. Concerns have been re raised about this rezoning application process and how it is applied. In the past, there have been several rezoning applications. Many of the residents have been interested to hear what is happening on their doorstep. The developers sell the residents on their plans so that they can go ahead with their idea. The community gets on board, yet nothing happens. In the meantime, the property is rezoned. Developer gets what they want. However, we as a community have not seen any change nor benefited from the rezoning. Planning department. The planning department seems to suggest, suggest <clears throat> the planning department seems to suggest that seeing a clear development plan before, land, before designation of land is not the way the system works. I ask why not? What legal impediments? If the town believes in a real consultation process, then why can't redevelopment plans be processed conditional on land use changes? It would seem to be a better process if land use designation occurred in conjunction with development application, especially considering that development in an area along with, with long-term residents and businesses, and as this is not a greenfield application. Council. We, requis we, rec <clears throat> Let's try that again. we request that council to consider these implications before what looks like a simple rezoning. The integrated downtown action plan indicates that First Street East is an extension of downtown. And if this rezoning goes ahead, council should consider the effects of additional traffic in the area. We would like the planning department to consider angle parking to help reduce congestion and allow for ease of access for future business and not forcing customers to park on side streets. We'd also like the town to consider stormwater. With each new redevelopment and as more land is covered with infrastructure, the land becomes less able to absorb water. We want to make sure the planning department considers stormwater in this rezoning application. In 2003, the town had a plan in place for sound attenuation devices. Since 2003, the town has, considered com the town has grown considerably. As our community, our community has also grown. 
In our current bylaws, it states that no sound source should exceed 55 decibels. We would like to hear from town how we would like to hear from the town how it is planning to mitigate sound greater than 55 decibels in the East End. The East End needs change. We need redevelopment. And we need and we need more fantastic redevelopments. This here is an example of a few, of a previous land designation. And today this is what we have. Thank you. All right, thank you for your presentation. Um, is Mr. Marshall speaking? Yes, please. Yeah, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. My name is Andy Marshall. And I just want to make a few, add to uh, Igor's presentation. I want to say that regarding any land use redesignation, I'd like to suggest that simply advertising a change is not community engagement. Now, when the Lower East Neighborhood Plan was approved more than 16 years ago, it stated in part that, quote, the residents wish to retain its, that is the neighborhood's, visually and environmentally appealing character. It went on to say, quote, the residents wish to participate in decisions involving these developments, unquote. Now there is a realization, of course, that as Cochran continues to grow, this neighborhood will face more change than any other neighborhood in Cochrane, except perhaps the old downtown. So rather than piecemeal changes, and, and we regard this CB redesignation of lots 308 and 312 that has already occurred, and now 316 as piecemeal, i.e as an island of rezoning because the owners of the parcels of, of, of these lots wanted to make them more saleable. It, it's better for citizens to see more overall comprehensive approach to planning. And in regards to the application for lot 316, it would seem that the die is cast. The former owners of lot 308 and 312 got their rezoning in 2017, why shouldn't the owners of 316? The uh, prospective owners say they need a redesignation because they have specific development plans for the three lots. Has anyone seen the three plans for these lots? And we heard uh, the, the presentation that we just heard was, was really not, didn't have a lot of information. We, we actually have no concrete information what is planned for these lots, how they will look, parking, landscaping, servicing, adherence to green principles, etc. The simple, a simple drawing by the owners that were shown to us shows very basic information for actually two of the lots. So, having approved lots 308 and 312 without an idea as to what is proposed, it's hard for council then to consider turning down lot 16, even if you don't know exactly what's planned there. So I hope there are two conclusions that the council may bear in mind when they make their decision. One is redesignating land in an already planned and occupied neighborhood without knowing the specific plans for the pr property can be a hit and miss strategy. Rezoning is better done in conjunction with a development application. And, and I don't know if there's anything in the Municipal Government Act that prevents that, but um, I, that's what the, uh, what the community is seeking. And the second point is that redesignations are better part of a much broader review of the Lower East Neighborhood Plan. Um, I appreciate the planning department is busy and this process takes a lot of effort by the town and by citizens. But this particular redesignation may well lead to a spate of other applications. And I su suggest to council that maybe it's time to give this living document, as, as some people call it, called the Lower East Neighborhood Plan, a thorough checkover and involving the people who live there 
in a meaningful way. I think council would be wise to see this rezoning as part of a wider planning issue, and that's what I want to hope to impress upon council today. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your presentation. Uh, Mr. Visser, are you complete? Uh, sorry. <clears throat> I'm free, I'm available, and Annie's also available if you yeah. have any questions. Okay. Awesome. So we'll get to the questions right now. Okay. So, Council, any questions for Mr. Visser or Mr. Marshall? Okay. Okay. Thank I, you. Oh, sorry. Councillor McFadden. Thank you. So just, uh, just for my own clarification, um, as I understand that one of the primary concerns is that what is being applied for, what the, the store is being sold is to be a part of a medical center, and there's concern that once the land use is changed, that that story might become something different. If, um, is there anything that you wouldn't want that site to be? Like, it, you're changing the land use to uh, CB, is there anything that would make the community really uncomfortable Yes, um, I've heard from several residents that they would not be in favor of bars or drinking establishments, but they would very much be in favor of um, residential, multi-story residential, small business such as coffee shops or bakeries. So, but the concept of a business on bottom floors and residential above fits within the community vision or what you're Correct. hearing? Correct. All right, thank you. If I may add, Mr. Mayor, that really the community association, it is an active association, but I mean, we haven't consulted the whole neighborhood, and that's why I, mm. I, I try to impress upon you that maybe it's time to look at the, the whole Lower East neighborhood plan rather than sort of these piecemeal redesignations that are going to go on. Okay, thank you. Councilor Perdico. I only have one quick question. Was there any uh, discussion about height, building height, of what could possibly come up within that area? Yeah, there was. Uh, there is concern that, sorry, there is concern that it would definitely shade neighboring properties. Um, and uh, again, uh, we have been told by the developer he doesn't intend to shade the ne neighboring properties or block. I guess the, the lighting or light from neighboring, the neighboring properties. Uh, however, nobody really knows because there's no true development plan in place. Uh, once it's rezoned, they can do what they like. Uh, but uh, there was concern that, uh, you know, under CB, it could be a five-story building. With R2X, uh, it is intended, I think, two and a half stories or 45 feet? There's a height. Height restriction of 45 feet. And they're, they're comfortable with that, but five stories would be in excess of their expectations. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, if I could just respond. In the uh, <clears throat> uh, bylaw amendment in 2017, there was a restriction uh, on the adjacent parcels uh, to three stories. Uh, so at second and third, uh, as this proceeds, uh, we would be considering similar uh, treatments for this property. So just to be clear, you're suggesting that the two and a half story or three story restriction would also apply to this apply property. To this. Okay. Mm. Okay. Councillor Wilson. Just one uh, clarification question from the Cochrane Settlement Community Association. I'm hearing two different things and they're probably possibly in conjunction. One is that um, your association's unhappy that more detailed plans have not been brought forward before zoning was to go ahead, I believe is what I'm hearing, but also that we were to engage in a Lower East Neighborhood Plan reevaluation study before zoning was to go ahead. Is that the income from the from the two different people? I, I, th I think uh, the concern is the piecemeal nature of it. You know, rezoning one lot at a time seems to um, not fit with a larger plan. Uh, currently, we have a plan in place, and rezoning one lot at a time seems um, inconsistent. Would you agree, Andy? Yeah. Yes, mm. and I, I don't think those, those two points are, are incompatible. 
um, because I think we appreciate you've already the the horse is out the stable on lots 308 and 312 so it's going to be pretty tough for council to say no to 316 uh, but as a as a principle uh, we want to I think discourage these what we call piecemeal applications piecemeal rezoning thank you thanks for the clarification and coming to present today Councilor McFadden. Thank you. Actually, I actually have a couple of questions for staff, if I may, just for clarification. I have some as well, so maybe you're, you'll cover them. Go for it. Perfect. So one of the uh, items that's being uh, asked today is whether we could link the rezoning with the development permit specifically. Uh, can that be done? Uh, no, through the, uh, through the chair to uh, Councilor uh, McFadden. Uh, we're, right now, the application is for the use. Do the uses in the uh, commercial uh, or central business district, are they applicable on this property? So that's the question that council is really asking. I understand the uh, concerns that are raised. Um, the next step is at the development permit stage where you get all of the details and the parking is uh, outlined, uh, landscaping, building treatment, treatments and things of that nature. So um, they are linked, but uh, it's not incumbent on the applicant to provide that level of detail at this stage. So, but through the MGA, there's no way that we can link it? No. Okay. And then the next question I have is also just being brought up right now is that the ability to, um, or the concern over um, a piecemeal rezoning um, and the idea that maybe it could be done is a broader concept. Um, but for my own clarification, I, it, is the challenge not then that it's because it's individual ownership on each of those lots and that the rezoning has to be tied to the ownership as well, or it's linked to the ownership? Well, I think the, the important thing here is I don't uh, disagree with Mr. Marshall in his comments that this plan is 16 years old and that it probably requires uh, or is overdue uh, for uh, some consideration of, of a review. It's not on our uh, work plan at this point, um, but you are correct. They're individual loan landowners. They have uh, different timing. Uh, and in the case of the application in 2017, we had someone come forward and uh, certainly now we have another uh, application. So uh, from administration's perspective, we are obliged to uh, review those applications and make recommendations. Okay. And I think it is a fair point that the plan itself that we're referencing is from 2002 and Correct. things change much faster than that in Cochrane. Yes. Thank you for now. Okay, thank you. I have a couple other follow-up ones that Councillor McFadden didn't get to. Um, no, you're, you covered a couple. Uh, so I heard from the presenter tonight about parking, uh, stormwater, sound, um, the conditions in the MGA we've already covered. But so those three uh, in particular are as you just referred to in the development permit stage and if the applicant's uh, permit or application did not address stormwater parking or uh, sound attenuation then that application would be denied by administration uh, that's correct they have to uh, mr mayor they have to meet all the requirements of the central business district if council did approve it so we would review that in accordance with our land use bylaw of course we're in the midst of reviewing our land use bylaw as well right now so uh, there is uh, changes forthcoming but uh, that does give us the uh, regulations to adhere to and uh, we would expect the applicant to adhere to them and if they don't they're uh, obviously subject to uh, requesting variances and and that uh, uh, influences where this application goes as well so in particular sound the 55 decibels uh, any uh, permitted use in the CB district or R2X for that matter uh, would be dealt with at the development permit stage. Uh, correct. The, the one uh, item with the sound, I think we would have to get some more information. I don't think that there'd specifically be a use that uh, is listed here that would uh, result in exceeding 55 decibels, but certainly we would uh, address that uh, when the application came forward. Okay. Thank you for that. Is there any other questions of the presenter? No? Okay. Thank you, sirs. 
Uh, next speaker, I have Ms. Sarah Leet. Hello. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing that correctly. I need to get rid of this thing. We will help you out with that. But I can launch into a, a, a few uh, um, we'll, uh, let, words let's wait. just before I get going. My name is Sarah Leet, as you okay. probably have in front of you. <laughs> um, I know I technically only have five minutes, Mr. Mayor, but. Um, I can gabble through this thing at 120 words a minute, and um, if you can give me an extra couple, I'd appreciate it. First of all, I want to thank you for allowing me to present, and I want to give a special thank you to two members of staff, Danica the planner, who went the extra mile and came out to an ad hoc site meeting in my back garden uh, on June the 10th, was it? Um, which was, uh, I think, going beyond the call of duty for her. And also this morning, um, I had some technical difficulties, so Jaylene Knight really helped me get this thing uh, on. So this is going to be um, a bit of a <laughs> botany 101, maybe. Natural capital on uh, 316, 316 being the number of the lot, of course. I brought a bit of natural capital with me, uh, a wild geranium. <laughs> so we've got butterflies, birds, and bees, more than a dozen types of trees on this lot, this big heritage lot. They're huge, and people had wonderful gardens there, heritage plant species, and we have deer that uh, frequent us quite often. Oh, somebody's done it for me. Um, so pollinators, uh, in uh, the interest of complete disclosure, these two photographs were not taken at the site. They were taken at my farm two years ago. But pollinators are pollinators, bees, and butterflies. Um, as I mentioned, um, I just did a, a recount of the trees. Over 14 species of trees, my friends. They provide us with oxygen. We have two types of lilac, uh, lovely white ones and uh, pink ones. We have uh, choke cherries. We have silver birch. We have three types of poplars, aspen. Um, cottonwood and balsam, and we have honeysuckle, and I could go on and on and on. We have hardy perennials, and these perennials come back year on year. Uh, hollyhocks, and uh, my God, the rhubarb is to die for. <laughs> uh, mountain ash, a particularly um, important tree, because it has, uh, this time of year, it has the white uh, flowers, and then in the fall, it has those amazing red berries that the wax wings. Um, these are actually cedar wax wings, um, taken up in Banff, I have to say, but uh, they come through here and they gorge on those cherries. It would be such a shame if they couldn't do that anymore, wouldn't it? So I look out of my bedroom window, and um, I know a lot of people think they have to go to yoga and wellness, this, that, and t'other. I just look out the window, and this is what I see wonderful lilac. This is on, obviously, the front garden of 316. And we have very quiet neighbors. My goodness, they come and go. We don't even know they're there. This doe, in fact, was across the street from 308 and 312. She was munching on the uh, uh, crab apples um, by the dentist's office. And then she had a pair of fawns that year. That's one of them there. He was, that's my back garden there. So who am I? Well, um, I'm a Jason resident. Um, I did write in a letter uh, in May because we were circulated. I'm not sure if you people have it in your package, do you? Yes? No? Uh, not in this package as part of this presentation, but I would have received it. Yes. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, I'm a bit hard of hearing. Uh, not part of this package, but it was would have been circulated okay, to all the council well, um, at that time. Anyway, it, it expressed some of my concerns, um, and some of them were were um, uh, were addressed when we had the site meeting. But um, at that time, we were presented with a plan uh, for 308 and 312, which uh, indicated, to my mind, quite substantial residential uh, development. Um, anyway, I'm a realistic um, Cochraneite. Um, I actually first bought groceries in this town when it was less than a thousand people, uh, the late 70s. Um, so I realized that we're going to get commercial development. Uh, the big 
desire, obviously, it's going to be smart enough to value natural capital, otherwise known as ecological goods and services, and be lead. Now, I understand, Mr. Mayor, Little Bird told me that you're actually rather keen on lead, the uh, leadership in uh, energy and um, efficient design. Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay. I'm keen on a lot of initiatives. Sorry? That's one of them. Yeah, you're right. Go to Canmore and look at Elevation Place, wonderful lead building. I have been for over 15 years, like the majority of us that are adjacent in uh, 320, um, and two of the, my neighbors are here tonight, um, and we've enjoyed this tranquil location, uh, um, that's apart from the CPR, of course, um, that is within, the, within walking distance of, uh, and, and this slide has got truncated, I'm afraid, but anyway, I'll try to say what I had to say. We're within walking distance, obviously, of doctors, dentists, pharmacists, supermarkets, hairdressers, the library, the post office. Uh, oh, my goodness. No, no, don't go yet. Um, down at the bottom, um, I had, uh, we're also within walking distance of some lovely pathways down to the bow. We're within walking distance of a craft beer brewery and a distillery. My goodness, what more could we want? So we... I realize that we have a fantastic development opportunity for somebody here. And um, the ecological goods and services are bound on this heritage lot. And I'm going to stress the heritage lot because, I mean, <laughs> I don't know when these lots were laid out, but probably around when Cochrane was incorporated over 100 years ago. Um, so we have over a dozen carbon dioxide <coughs> consuming tree species. We have hollyhocks and tulips. We have exceedingly fertile soil. It's the soil that would have been in the floodplain uh, way, way back, um, post-glaciation, uh, so exceedingly fertile. We have abundant wildlife, we have white-tailed deer and many birds, and don't forget the bees and the butterflies that pollinate for us. And I could have put squirrels in there, although they're the one animal that I could do without. <laughs> so, once again, this, <laughs> this slide has been truncated. But it says, if we lose the pollinators, folks, it's fuddle-duddle to Homo sapiens. So... Next slide, please. <laughs> I'm going to misquote John Lennon here, and maybe you guys would like to join in if this redesignation goes through. All I am saying is give plants a chance, and they'll repay the owner with interest. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it is meant to put a smile on your faces. Yes. I, I was going to preface it with saying there's no plans and no maps and no tables. We see a lot of those, yes. So thank you for keeping your presentation to okay. uh, five minutes. I'm pretty sure you were bang on there. Uh, <laughs> and so if I'm reading you correctly, you obviously you care about what's on the property already. You would like to see whatever development is that would potentially move forward in the future to consider the natural flora and fauna that exist already. Yeah, well, let's just call it what it is. It's natural capital. It's money in the bank. Yeah. It's there for nothing. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions for Ms. Leet? Councillor Flowers. It's a question for administration. Is that a, a natural thing that we can put on a, as a condition that the trees are saved along the property line especially? Uh, through the chair to Councillor Flowers, no, that's not. We would evaluate the development application that's submitted. Uh, of course, we try our best in, uh, in cases where we can protect things, but uh, there's no real uh, tools uh, for us. Seeing no other questions, thank you for Are your you presentation. Done with me? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're done with us. <laughs> I have no other speakers on the list. Is there anyone in the gallery that wishes to speak for or against the application? Seeing none. Um, yep. Can I ask the applicant a question? Yep, we are getting to that. You're skipping a step here. Sorry. 
Uh, so seeing no other uh, <laughs> people in the gallery that wish to speak, is there a uh, follow-up from administration? So I understand Councillor Flowers, or McFadden, sorry, may have a question of administration. Go for it. Question for the applicant, if I could. Oh, sorry, the applicant. Okay. <coughs> I misheard you. Yes, please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so what is intriguing, of course, about your application, and one of the things we certainly need to do as a community is um, also focus on our economic development and the type of businesses that we do want to draw to Cochrane, which would be medical services. Uh, we've always identified tech and engineering firms. Um, so could you outline for what, your vision for this site? Um, how much employment in the medical field would you be bringing to town? Um, so uh, right now, um, as I previously mentioned, there are four uh, physicians which are going for the plan, and they will be opening a medical clinic facility which would be 3,000 to 4,000 square feet of medical uh, clinic. And along with that, their vision is to open a diagnostic center. Because right now, uh, one of the physicians, she is working in Cochrane right now. and she had to send most of the elderly patients to Calgary for all the diagnostic services. So she was saying that I want to open my own diagnostic center here and um, medical clinic and diagnostic center where all the patients get their um, uh, lab services here on site in, Co in Cochrane. So that uh, potentially because it is restricted uh, in the zoning that there will be only main floor would be the uh, commercial um, uh, retail commercial medical and uh, second and third floor will be residential so having said that because we have a limited uh, site and because of the health um, um, uh, zoning we need more parking spaces that's why we need a uh, smaller footprint of the establishment. That would be 8,000 to 9,000 square feet of the uh, main floor. So whatever that is, that would be only um, given us medical clinic, pharmacy, diagnostic center, and dentist and one other Cairo or something like that. Um, so potentially the employment impact Definitely, in one of uh, like in one um, walk-in clinics, you'll be if four doctors are sitting, they have uh, MAO uh, nurses and receptionists. Along with them, ten to twelve staff, and then on top of that, there's a patient load. That is just for the three thousand to thirty-five hundred square feet of medical clinic. And if there are other uh, businesses, uh, health-related businesses, they have the same uh, employment uh, for each uh, of their, uh, uh, like dentist and uh, chiropractor and physiotherapy. Okay. Um, but if I may, um, we, have, we should be careful not to delve too deeply into the development permit application and keep it land use, which is what we're discussing tonight. Fair enough. Um, so then my, my next question for you is obviously the concerns uh, in the community um, that you're hoping to be a good neighbor to is that, uh, I think the word was a bait and switch, that is, you know, this is the concept being put forward. I think people yep. can be comfortable with that. What sort of uh, reassurance can you give the residents um, that you're going to be a good neighbor and this is what you're actually going to deliver on? Um, that's the plan actually and the honors uh, of 308 and 312 these are the uh, honors who put the forward the application and they are the proposed honor of this uh, 316 so they already own 308 and 312 uh, considering considering in mind of their professional establishment and because of the parking limitation they had to extend to 316 that was the main purpose. So if they are trying to uh, get an ownership of 316, which is conditional on the rezoning, then definitely they are going to, uh, that's the reassurance that they are going ahead with the med uh, medical professional building. Okay. 
All right, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Nagel. A uh, oh. question for the applicant again before you. One more away. question sure. for you, sir. Um, in, in light of the concerns that we just heard, if we do move ahead with a uh, commercial land use approval, would you be willing to work with our administration to preserve as much of the uh, plants and green space and natural capital as possible? Uh, yes, actually, I, uh, during our first initial meeting, uh, I was told that uh, and there is uh, already a restriction if we uh, take down two or three trees, I think, believe that, we have to plant another one tree or something like that. So uh, there are some of the big trees which are along the road, the uh, um, future homeowner, uh, the uh, applicant, they want to keep those trees and only they might have to take down the backside trees where we had to do the parking. But obviously there is a restriction, we have to replant those trees along the property line. Okay, thanks, that's it. Thank you, Councillor Nagel. Any other questions? Administration, applicant, no? Thank you, sir. Thank you. We will close this public hearing then and move on to our next public hearing. Bylaw 21, moving in order. Land use amendment for Heartland redesignation, Mr. Weldon. Okay, just before you start, sure. um, just to, for, to be clear, I think unless uh, not everyone was clear on that, Councillor uh, Reed had given a uh, conflict of interest last meeting, but then uh, had realized that his property <coughs> is adjacent or outside of the zone, so is able to sit through the public hearing and vote and take part. So I just wanted to make that clear. Sure, great, thank, thank you. you. Good evening, Mayor Janung, members of council. I'd like to present to you bylaw 21, 2019 uh, for uh, your consideration for public hearing tonight. Now, uh, this bylaw amendment is a redesignation of 125 properties with existing townhomes within the community of Heartland. The redesignation is specifically from the residential high density multi-unit dwelling district, or RM, to residential multi-unit dwelling district, R3. Uh, you can see on the map here it, of the affected parcels, it affects townhomes on Clydesdale Place, Clydesdale Way, Belgian Street, and Belgian Link, and it's outlined here with these properties here, highlighted. This is a town-led project uh, due to the, uh, the process issues that had happened in the past, and I'll get into that here in a second. Uh, I'd like to provide you with a little bit of the history and background specific for these properties uh, that led uh, to this redesignation or the need for the redesignation. The original area structure plan uh, for Heartland uh, actually occurred in 2007. It was called the Ranch of Cochrane. At the same time, once that area structure plan was adopted, the RM land use was approved and designated for this land. That led to the subdivision of the properties for the townhomes in, uh, starting in 2007 and then ultimately registered in 2009. And then uh, once the subdivision was, re was registered and the properties were created, four townhomes were, were built and that was between 2009 and 2010. However, at that time, no development permits uh, were applied for or taken out or approved by the town. Uh, also, uh, at this time, uh, the original developer uh, had passed, unfortunately, um, and uh, there was a bit of a break between uh, the development of the community of Heartland. It was taken up by a new developer, uh, as well as the new home builders for Heartland, uh, and that began in 2013 uh, to 2015. And this is when the remaining 121 townhomes on those properties were built. However, again, at that time, no development permits were applied for or issued by the town. 
uh, and at the same time, uh, gon uh, concrete garage foundations were also developed by the home builder. From 2016 to 2017, detached garages were built on these foundations. Now I'll get into the issues for these properties, starting with the land use district, the RM land use district. So uh, the developments that are currently on these properties are designated or defined as street-oriented townhomes in our land use bylaw. Currently, the RM district does not list street-oriented townhomes as a use in the RM district. Secondarily, the subdivision regulations do not support fee simple lots, and I'll explain that. So this is the RM di district. The purpose and intent of the district is to provide for comprehensively designed developments with a mix of dwelling units in various forms. That comprehensively designed intent is more for condominium type of developments. As you can see in the listed use, uses, both permitted and discretionary, street-oriented townhomes are not a listed use uh, in this district. The minimum lot area requirements for the RM district for multi-unit dwellings or dwelling groups, which are essentially for uh, mainly for condominium types of developments, is 930 square meters. The properties that were created uh, in 2009 did not meet this minimum requirement they are between 240 square meters and 180 square meters. The second issue is that the building permits were issued for the townhomes without an approved development permit. So the normal process uh, for construction and development within the town is that a development permit is applied for and issued by the town first prior to the building permit uh, being applied for and issued by the town. Uh, this did not happen. The building permits were uh, um, approved and issued by the town uh, without uh, the approval of the development permits. Uh, secondarily to this, the building permits were issued for the detached garage foundations at the same time uh, without development permits uh, in place. And this was specifically for the zero lot line detached garages. Thirdly, uh, administration uh, in 2016 did issue development permits for the ground uh, foundations at the property line. Uh, one of the conditions of the approval that was that an easement be registered on the adjacent properties that allows for access for maintenance purposes. This condition of approval uh, was not met. Uh, there was a six month timeline for this to happen um, and that had lapsed. And so the permits uh, that were in place back in 2016 uh, are void and need to be reissued by the town. Lastly, compliance certificates cannot be issued uh, without the approved development permits in place. Uh, so compliance certificates are uh, applied for by a landowner, um, normally because a financial institution is requiring it at the time of sale of the property. And what it does is it confirms that the property is in compliance with our land use bylaw. Because no development permits are in place for both the townhomes or the detached garages, the town is unable to issue compliance certificates, which uh, results in complications uh, in the sale of properties. And administration is working towards rectifying this situation, the first step of which is applying the correct land use to the properties. So the proposed amendment, again, is to redesignate the 125 properties from RM to R3. The purpose is to uh, apply the correct zoning on the, purple, uh, on the parcels. The R3 district, the intent is to provide for a mix of bachelor, one, two, and three bedroom dwelling units in various housing forms to a maximum height of three stories. As you can see in the list of permitted uses in the R3 district, street-oriented townhomes is a listed permitted use. Again, for the lot areas, it will meet the minimum lot areas of the land use bylaw which is listed for street-oriented townhomes at 240 square meters for the outside units and 180 for the inside units of the townhomes. So again, once the correct zoning for the parcels uh, is applied, that allows administration to issue the development permits for both the townhomes and the detached garages. 
It will bring the, uh, once those are issued, it will bring the existing development into conformance with our land use bylaw and it, it will allow the compliance certificates to be issued to the landowners. Now, we have uh, recognized that there was some process issues in the past that have been addressed. Um, three, uh, three points of which I'd like to point out to Council. Firstly, um, the one issue that I had uh, raised earlier was that the building permits were issued without a development permit. Uh, there is a check in place between the building code section within the town and the planning section which issues the development permits and building permits uh, at the time of application now have a check in place to ensure that a development permit uh, has been issued by the town prior uh, to the processing of the, build, uh, the building permits. At the time of compliance certificate review there is a, a check in place to ensure that a development permit has been issued by the town. And then at the time of uh, subdivision, in accordance with the land use district and the zoning regulations, there is a confirmation that the uh, use and the minimum lot sizes are checked at the time of subdivision approval as well. The communication and the public engagement, two letters were mailed out to the affected landowners, the first being in March, which uh, explained the situation, and then again in May, outlining the process uh, before you tonight uh, for the redesignation before council. Letters were mailed to the adjacent landowners, and I'd like to acknowledge uh, Mr. Reed's comment, or Councillor Reed, excuse me, uh, comment at the last council meeting uh, with regards to the adjacent notification letter uh, and that uh, that will be uh, addressed in the future to make it more clear to the adjacent landowners. And then lastly on June 19th uh, the bylaw was presented to the Cochrane Planning Commission. They had the following comments. First that they are in full support of the direction and changes as presented and they had a suggestion to reference a clear process map moving forward. They appreciate the technical aspects um, and that it's getting fixed by the simplest solution that works well. Glad that the planning and safety code section communicate more than back uh, when this started and that more uh, work is done in-house rather than by contractors. This is on uh, the side of our uh, building code. And suggest administration look forward to other situations in the future to determine what other uh, prevention measures, uh, thinking out of the box, that could be thought of to prevent not only the situation but others like it um, in the future. And lastly, uh, CPC supports that homeowners not have to pay any fees uh, for the development permits in the future. And that is the case. I'd like to point out that uh, the development permit fees as well for the garages and both for the, the principal uh, townhouse dwellings uh, have been paid for by the uh, original home builder. The recommendation tonight is that Council receives and considers all comments provided on Bylaw 21 2019. And I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Weldon, for your presentation. Council, any questions of admin? I have one. Um, and you just spoke to it at the very end of your presentation. Um, and it's probably a question that most of the affected residents are thinking of, if mm -hmm. not speaking to you about. I've heard a couple of things. Um, no cost of this change will have to be borne by the residents affected. Um, that is true. I will qualify that. Uh, so uh, the fees for the development permit application uh, for both the townhomes and the detached garages uh, will not be borne by the current landowners. Uh, there is a fee, though, for some of the affected property owners related to the registration of the easement that's required for the detached garages in the back. So the easement is related to accessing on a neighboring property uh, when a building is built to zero lot line. An access easement is needed to ensure that the maintenance of that side of the building can happen without having to trespass on a neighboring property. So that, that easement allows the access for the maintenance in the future. Uh, there's also a drainage easement that is required. There is a cost that is associated with registering that at, at land titles, and that would be borne by the current landowner. So would that, in a sense, put um, a landowner who purchased a home thinking all of this was in place, 
at a position to have to pay for now this registration? That is correct. Yeah, for the registration of the easement, correct. Has administration looked at uh, a different uh, strategy to help offset these costs? Uh, we have directed the landowners uh, to uh, contact the, uh, the original home builder. Uh, we have also uh, reached out to the home builder as well to try to address the issue. Um, what magnitude of cost are we talking about per I, resident? I believe, um, correct me if I'm wrong, it's, yeah, $35. It's $35 per easement. Uh, so you would be looking at a maximum of $70 for the registration. Well, it's not 3500 No. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor McFadden. Uh, thank you. Um, certainly support the direction on this, but a question um, in your strategy when you're looking ahead to make sure that this doesn't happen again, and I applaud those, um, but are there any penalties that we can apply to builders that build either deliberately an error or an honest error, or do we need to create... Um, a policy where we could actually levy a penalty? Mm -hmm. uh, through the mayor, uh, that's a good question. Um, it is certainly something that we are considering in uh, the rewrite of our land use bylaw. Um, we, we do have a, a very generic uh, uh, penalty process for, for fines that is currently in place under our current bylaw. Moving forward, uh, we are going to be addressing fines um, uh, in, in a different way. Uh, that would address this situation. Do you have a ballpark number of what an appropriate fine would be for something like this? Because there's a lot of work going in and a lot of stress for a lot of people to fix this. Right. Um, I can't give you a ballpark figure right off the cuff. However, we have looked into this. Um, we are looking, I can give you a little bit of a glimpse of what we're looking at. <coughs> we are looking at a tiered system. And what I mean by that is um, fines for first offenders within a year. Um, if there's another offense within the calendar year, that would then jump up into another category. The fines would then increase, um, I won't say exponentially, but they would increase significantly for multiple offenders um, over the course of the same calendar year, uh, as well as uh, years um, uh, within the future. All right, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Council. I think that's all the questions we have for you, Mr. Weldon. Okay, thank you. Would there be, there's no speakers list this night? No? Is there anyone in the gallery that wishes to speak on this issue? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing and take a three minute recess to allow the reset of our IT department to move into our super awesome council meeting yet to follow that I'm so happy everybody's here for.